an artificial intelligence war, a war over the development of artificial intelligence. He saw this breaking down into two camps. He termed those two camps Cosmos and Terrans. And so I want to get his definition of those two camps. Now we want to talk about how close he thinks that is to happening. And I want to talk to him about what I would call, Dr. Garris, your conflict over seeing this breaking out into possibly the extinction of the human species, yet nevertheless being drawn to continue the development of it anyway. I guess I would call it the uh, Daguerreus paradox, maybe. <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you about that because I think that's something that at every level, uh, scientists and engineers, uh, especially those working with the military industrial complex, need to be uh, thinking through these issues, the ethical considerations about what they're doing, the consequences of what they're doing. So I want to get to that, but before we do, break down for us uh, your idea of these two competing camps, the Cosmos and the Terrans. Okay, um, if you ask me what was the dominant political, global political question of the 19th century, I'd say probably it was Marx's question, you know, who should own capital? And that, that question just divided society bitterly into the communists and the capitalists. And we almost had a, a war in 1960, a nuclear war in 1962 over that relatively trivial issue. But uh, the, the equivalent dominant global political question for the 21st century, I see again in four words, and, and that would be, um, should humanity build intellects? And now an intellect is an artificial intellect. In other words, a, a godlike, massively intelligent machine with mental capacity, so you know, trillions of trillions of times above the human level. So the people um, I label in favor of building those godlike machines, and it'd be a kind of religion for them almost, uh, I mean, a scientifically based religion, but, but a religion in a certain sense, because they would be building gods, and, and, and that's a you know, motivator. And on the other hand, uh, the people who are opposed to building these intellects, I call them Terrans. That's not terror as in terrorist, but terror, the earth because that's their perspective. They, they want, their number one priority is that human beings should remain the dominant species and most intelligent. Whereas the cosmos, that's based on the word cosmos, you know, the universe, that's their picture, because they see that if human beings, if humanity does decide to build these godlike machines, these artilects, then uh, probably very quickly they would decide, you know, what are we doing on this little heat planet called the Earth when there's a whole universe, you know, there's a whole cosmos out there to explore, and, and that cosmos may contain beings uh, far, far superior to, to what they are, these, these artilects, because they've been around for billions of years longer than we have. Our sun, our star, is only, what, a third of the age of the universe? So hang, hang on zillion. just one second, Dr. Degaris, because we, we're, we're showing some of the slides that you had sent us about your presentation. And I'm looking at the one here where it has uh, the stars, and it says Cosmos, and it has cyborgs, uh, which is Ray Kurzweil's understanding of this. And we see a right. part man, part machine. And then the one in the middle, it says Terran, and it shows a Terminator robot. Now... I, I would look at that as thinking that was kind of more on the cosmos standpoint. But you, you're, why would you choose the Terran uh, for the Terran picture? Why would you choose the Terminator robot? Because the number one worry, concern of the Terrans is that if the cosmos go ahead and actually build these artilects, and then the artilects become massively intelligent and, and so superior to human beings that they look on us as an inferior pest, you know, I see. Who, who's to who's to say? That so that's these, the that's the vision of each of these groups. The vision of the cosmos yeah, yeah, is to yeah, reach yeah, out yeah, to yeah, the stars. That's, that's, and it's either their greatest vision, their the, the, the greatest wonder, mm -hmm. the, uh, sense of awe, or you know, awe, or their greatest fear. Let me interject in here just momentarily. Fears. You know, Elon Musk is is very concerned about a dystopian outcome from uh, self aware artificial intelligence. I think it's interesting that he's also developing uh, SpaceX. You, you think he is trying to come up with a plan B, so he's got an escape port to uh, get out of here in case this all goes down pretty bad? <laughs> well, what, what I had a scenario in my book that uh, a bunch of cosmos researchers, they, they get in a rocket and try to escape from the Earth to get away from the Terrans. Yes. But the, ter the Terrans, I would argue, uh, would be so fearful 
that uh, if this escaping rocket did succeed in building Artelex, who's to say that the Artelex might decide, to, oh, we want to get back to the Earth? It's so full of uh, raw materials. And That's true. So, uh, and we've seen so a lot of we've seen a lot of aspects of uh, of your book, uh, the Artelex War. We've seen that uh, mirrored in movies when you're talking about uh, Cosmos uh, uh, trying to escape into a. Uh, uh, a, a near-Earth orbit or whatever to hide out. Uh, it, it reminds me of what we saw in Elysium. And, of course, with Transcendence, they, they borrowed quite liberally from uh, your scenario, didn't they? Yeah, do you, do you, there's, a, there's an amusing little story behind Transcendence. Do you want to hear it? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, a couple of years back, I, I got hired uh, by Warner Brothers to be the tech advisor to a movie that was to be called um, Twilight Zone. It was, it was to be a remake of, of the popular 50s uh, science fiction series, uh, Twilight Zone. And so I was, I was trying to look, advise them strongly, saying, look, make the background story um, as realistic as possible, set maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 years in the future, where AI is really becoming, uh, you know, not, not a piece of science fiction anymore, but it's, it's getting real, you know, real AI. And to the point where people are getting alarmed, uh, people are taking sides, uh, vigilante groups are being set up. Now, in the movie uh, Transcendence, uh, that, that group was called Rift. So in the movie, uh, what, what was called Rift is the equivalent of what I call Terrans. So, so the same thing. Mm -hmm. So... I didn't hear anything for a while, so, so I assumed the, the movie just died. That, that often happens in Hollywood. And then suddenly uh, up come flyers and uh, trailers for this movie Transcendence. And I look at it and say, hey, hey, that's my story. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what do you think happened? Because Transcendence is Warner Brothers, right? It's a Warner yeah. Brothers movie. So yeah. what I'm deeply suspicious happened <laughs> was uh, it wouldn't be the first time. The ideas time. were transferred, transferred from, from one, you know, my movie to the other movie. And then that way, they didn't have to pay me the five-figure you know, yeah. bonus for, for getting the movie films. That's I'm, true. I'm feeling rather pissed. That, that wouldn't but, be the first time something like that happened. Now, you're looking at essentially a conflict, uh, people being concerned because they see uh, rapidly advancing artificial intelligence. Perhaps they see uh, control of their life uh, slipping away, uh, increasingly uh, power being concentrated. Maybe there's massive unemployment that uh, people are concerned about because of uh, uh, the use of lower level artificial intelligence. So people start to push back against it, especially those who are concerned that it may become the kind of threat that we saw in the Terminator movie. We're talking about movies, you know, where the where Skynet becomes self-aware, and then they start acting like uh, we saw Sarah Connors act in uh, Terminator 2, where she starts going after, let's say, key scientists. We actually had this already happen in real life, didn't we, with the Unabomber, with Ted Kaczynski uh, going out. If you look at his manifesto, that's exactly what he was concerned about. He was targeting what he thought were uh, key scientists, uh, doing it in a very uh, violent way, trying to uh, blow them up with letter bombs and that sort of thing. But uh, that's essentially what you see happening, even... If we don't get to the level where we have super intelligent uh, uh, artificial intelligences that become self-aware, the Artelex, as you refer to them, even if that doesn't happen prior to that, uh, it would be a, the idea of it or the implementation of the early stages of it would set different camps in humanity uh, against each other into a violent war. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, it, it depends on whether this the level of development of artificial intelligence is quick or or slow. Um, the, the guys in the, you know, the specialists in this area, they talk about slow takeoff and fast takeoff. I don't know if you're familiar with those terms. So if, if there's a fast takeoff, um, meaning that uh, these machines rapidly become ultra intelligent, then there, there may not be enough time for human politics to, to unfold. So they're, they're just there. It's just fait mm -hmm. accompli. And so then uh, human, humanity's fate would lie in the hands of these artlets. But I think it's more realistic to say probably there's going to be a slow takeoff because uh, trying to figure out how the human brain works is a you know, very, very difficult problem. So probably uh, the most realistic scenario is I see that human, humanity will have enough time to react politically as, as these machines get smarter and smarter. And the time frame, you mentioned a bit about the time frame, um, I see the uh, home robot industry becoming one of the biggest and richest in the world, say, by mm, the end of the 20s, so say, you know, a decade, decade and a half from now. 
And so uh, as, as they become, these machines become more and more intelligent and more and more useful, then uh, you know, people will buy them because uh, if, if these machines truly can walk the dog and babysit the kids and tell you stories and entertain you and sex you and educate you and all these things, people will pay big money, may, maybe even more than for a car, just, just to have a home robot. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a year or two later, you know, they upgrade their model. You know, they, they go and trade in their old one for a new one. And the new one has a much richer vocabulary and a sense of humor and it's cynical and it can do far more things. Then once you've had several upgrades like this, then, then millions, you know, billions of people will, will be asking the, you know, the same questions. Will, will these machines become smarter than we are? And then that will set what I call the species dominance debate. It will you know, really, start, really start raging in the, in the 2020s. Perhaps, Dr. Degaris, uh, what might happen as we become increasingly